Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Science News. Today, I want to talk about research that was recently done by Professor Heather Pattisall and PhD student Cheryl Arambula at North Carolina State University, published in the journal Neurotoxicology. Their research was really interesting because it involved administering bisphenol A, better known as BPA, to gestating rats, to see how the chemical would affect brain development. The quantities of BPA given to the rats was relatively small. The U.S. FDA says that BPA exposure of 50 micrograms per kilogram of body weight per day is the upper limit where there's no observable adverse effect. Some of the experimental rats were exposed to levels far below this, like 25 micrograms per kilo of body weight, which is half the safe quantity, while some of them were given as little as 2.5 micrograms per kilogram of body weight, which is 1 20th of the safe quantity. The results of Patasol's and Arambula's research was eye-opening. They found that even the smallest exposure to BPA was able to cause changes in gene expression in the amygdala, namely with genes involved in the receptors for sex hormones, like the receptors for oxytocin, vasopressin, androgen, and estrogen, with female rats being particularly more susceptible to these brain alterations than male rats. In reference to the gene for androgen receptors in amygdala cells, Cheryl Arambula said, uh, quote, In humans, this gene is important for forming differences between male and female brains, which suggests that this could be a way by which BPA exposure might alter sex differences in the human brain. About their research in a more general sense, Professor Heather Pattisall said, in a quote, in our previous work, including work for this consortium, we found similar changes in other brain regions, including the hypothalamus and the hippocampus. There is now a wealth of data showing that BPA can alter neurodevelopment. There is no question that prenatal BPA exposure at levels currently considered safe for humans affects hormone-sensitive gene expression in the developing rodent brain, suggesting that what we consider safe for human brains may need to be re-evaluated. Now, I'm inclined to agree with Professor Pattisall, as she's a working member of a research initiative to explore all aspects of BPA's effect on the body. This is a big project, involving the likes of the National Toxicology Program, the National Institute of Environmental Health Sciences, and the FDA. The entire project is aiming for comprehensive, full-body understanding of how BPA affects human tissues and organs and cells, and Pattisall's work is focused on the brain and behavior. This research is really important, because bisphenol A, or BPA, is present in all kinds of commercial plastics that you come into contact with on a daily basis. Now, maybe you aren't pregnant, uh, maybe you can't get pregnant, uh, but if you're a woman who is pregnant or is planning on being pregnant, you should definitely be made aware that BPA exposure can potentially affect the development of sexual differentiation in your fetus's brain. In the U.S., there were bills proposed to the Senate in 2008 and 2009 to regulate BPA in plastic, but they didn't pass. At first, the FDA assured the public that BPA was safe, but they were criticized because they were citing old studies with outdated equipment, while ignoring numerous modern studies conducted with much more accurate measuring technology. By 2010, though, some concern seems to have materialized at the FDA, and efforts began to spread awareness. State bans started with California in 2011, ultimately leading to 12 states banning BPA in children's bottles and food containers by 2014. But even today, in late 2017, BPA still exists in many consumer products and is in contact with a lot of food that people buy on the shelves of their grocery stores. Hopefully this most recent data collected by Heather Pattisall and Cheryl Arambula will cause the FDA to take a fresh look at BPA and consider stronger regulations to protect people from what is now known to be a potent endocrine disruptor. 